What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at Logic and Go. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna start to look at Logic and Go. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at Logic and Go. And Logic and Go is very simple. If you're familiar with any other programming language, you're gonna be very familiar with Logic and Go. So let's start out just by creating a variable. I'm gonna call this var first name, and this is gonna be a string. And we wanna just set this equal to John. Now you can use strings, you can use integers, you can use any of your comparison operators in logic, we're just gonna use strings in this because I feel like it. <laughs> so let's go if first name equals John. And notice the double equal to sign, that's our comparison operator that compares things, it doesn't assign things, right? And to do logic, we just use brackets. So then inside of here, we do whatever we wanna do. So let's say fmt.println, and let's say hello, and then let's print out the first name variable. And that's it. So this will test to see if this variable equals John right here. And of course it does. And if that's true, as it is, it'll execute whatever's between these curly brackets. So we can go ahead and save this. I've just saved this as logic.go. And I should mention I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this series. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my C go stuff directory. Let's run go run logic.go. And it says, hello, John. So if we came back here, obviously, and change this to Tim, save this and run it, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to return anything. Why? Well, because the program tested to see if first name was John. It isn't. It's Tim. So nothing happens. Nothing inside of these curly brackets gets executed if this conditional statement right here is false. So that's cool. Basic if statements, very simple. We can also do an else statement. And to do an else statement, we just slap an else at the end of this and put in more brackets. And here we can say fmt.println. And then we can say something like, sorry, comma, first name, comma, I don't know you. <laughs> so again, we're going to test to see if it equals John. If it is, it's going to say, hello, John. If it's not, it's gonna say, sorry, whatever the name is, I don't know you. So if we save this and run it, we can predict exactly what's gonna happen. It's gonna say, sorry, Tim, I don't know you. Pretty simple. So there's one more bit of logic we can use, the else if. This allows us to test multiple conditions in our statement. So to do that, we just come down here or wherever you wanna do this. We just type in else if, and then create another conditional statement. So we could say, hey, if first name equals Tim, right? And then again with the curly brackets and do whatever you want. So dot print line, and we can say, what's up, comma, first name, put an exclamation mark, whatever. So here it's gonna test first if it equals John. If it does, it will run whatever's in these brackets and then stop, right? None of this code here will get executed as soon as one of the conditions becomes true. If this is not true, which in our case it's not, our string is Tim, not John, so this gets skipped and we go down to the next conditional statement. Else, if first name equals Tim, say, hey, what's up, Tim? And then stop. This will not get executed. If this is not true, then this gets executed. So if we save this, we can predict pretty much what's gonna happen here. It's gonna say, hey, what's up, Tim? Ah, and we get an error. So the reason we got an error here is because unlike some programming languages like Python, this is very specific. See our else right here? It's on its own line. And Go just doesn't like that. It wants it right in this exact format. So right after your curly brackets, you're gonna want your else. Same thing with this else if. Right after these curly brackets, you want this, right? Likewise, if you put it like this, you're also gonna get an error, right? So these have to be in very specific spots. So just a go thing. And okay, we can go ahead and save this. Let's go back over here and run this guy. Let's clear the screen first. And what's up, Tim, right? Woo, <laughs> right, so, so very easy. And we could play around here. We could say Mary, right? Well, it's not, first name is not John. First name is not Tim. So it's gonna do whatever this is. Sorry, Mary, I don't know you. So if we save this and run it, just to make sure that works. Sorry, Mary, I don't know you. Pretty cool. So again, we've used strings and 
this double equal to sign, you could easily do something else, right? We could say uh, my num, we just really quickly say 41, right? And then we could say if my num is greater than 30, you know, do something fmt.println. And here we could say 41 is greater than 30 or whatever, right? Here you would probably want to say my num instead. And here we could go else fmt.println my num comma is less than 30. So if we save this, head back over here, ran this guy. Here we see 41 is greater than 30. If we came back over here and changed this to like 12 or something and save this and ran it, we would see 12 is less than 30, right? So any of your comparison operators will work greater than, equal to, less than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, all the stuff we looked at in the last video, those operators will all work for the most part. Assignment operators won't work obviously because we're not assigning right here. We're, we're testing for a condition, but that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.